Okay, in verse 12, we read, Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. So remember, Galilee is up north. He has to go through Samaria to get to Galilee, which is an interesting thing. And he's up in Galilee, and verse 13, it says, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Sabulon and Nephtalim, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias, the prophet, that's Isaiah, saying, The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephtalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So, and that's verse 15. This is really, I think, an important thing that, that we usually pass over here. And understanding the background, we, we oftentimes think, well, there's such a big void of, of background and information about Jesus uh, when he was young, etc., and his background, etc. But this gives us some real meat that we don't usually look at. And that is that he grew up in Galilee, Nazareth in Galilee. And understanding what Galilee was gives us a better idea of maybe what his background would be. First of all, we realize that Galilee is a province that was a part of the northern kingdom of Israel. So way back around the time of Isaiah, early 721 BC, more or less, um, the northern kingdom was conquered by Assyria and the people were taken away. In place of those people, you know, some of them were left behind, but in place of those people were brought other people from other kingdoms. That's how the Assyrians did it. A lot of kingdoms back then did it like this. So they would go and they would grab other peoples from other kingdoms. They basically would destroy the culture. And then they would have other Assyrians that would, that would also go in and be a part of that northern kingdom. Well, Galilee was a remnant of that. And so you had a mixture of Samaritans, uh, which were, were, were people of the northern kingdom mixed with other groups, so they were they had some Israelite blood, and then you would have Gentiles that came from different other different countries and backgrounds. And then you have the Jews that when they came back, and maybe there was a remnant of, of Judah as well that remained in Galilee, but then you have some of the Jews that are in Galilee as well, like Joseph and Mary. And here they live in this area that is primarily Gentiles. So as, a, as Jews, they are actually minorities in their province that they live in, in Galilee. And so that's an interesting background. And then, of course, his neighbors to the south are not Jews, but they're Samaritans. So Jesus grows up in an area where his neighbors, immediate neighbors and distant neighbors, are not all Jews. A minority are actually Jews. Uh, so when we hear about Jesus' parables, oftentimes about you know the Samaritans, or he's helping the Samaritan woman, and he's talking about the Gentiles. Remember, the Gentiles are always brought up in relation to the restoration of the Melchizedek priesthood. That's an interesting tidbit that I've found. If you look wherever, especially in Isaiah, where we're talking about uh, the Messiah and the Melchizedek priesthood, and as you look through the Book of Mormon, you'll see that this idea of the restoration of the full gospel coincides with the gospel going to the Gentiles. That's always brought together. So that's an interesting thing to know about, about Jesus' background. Another thing to know about Galilee is that uh, more or less 150, 200 years before the time of Christ, the Jews actually tried to force the Galileans to convert to Judaism and to be circumcised. So there's some bad blood, some bad history uh, there in Galilee. And of course, you just have this, this separation of of the Jews that are the minority in Galilee and, and everybody else. And so when uh, the Jews in Jerusalem say, you know, Jesus is from Nazareth or from Galilee, what good can come from Galilee? That kind of gives you a background of what they're thinking about. And then we drop down to verse 17 and we see, uh, from that time, Jesus began to preach 
and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So repent again is the Aaronic priesthood, the preparatory uh, function, and then the kingdom of God would be the full restoration of the Melchizedek priesthood. He's saying, look, the kingdom of God with me as the king is at hand here. Then down in verse 18, we read, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. So one thing we find out in the Joseph Smith translation is that in addition to saying, follow me, he first says to them, I am he of who the prophets have written. So he's telling them, um, and, and they probably already know, they may already have been uh, um, disciples of John the Baptist, but he's saying, I am he, I am the Messiah. I am the Elias that has come to restore everything. And then he gives an example again of moving from the physical to the spiritual. And we find this throughout the scriptures, especially in a restoration type of an example like this, uh, where he says, where he says, look, you're, you're fishermen, you fish for fish, but now I'm going to have you fish for men. I'm going to give, I'm going to take you from a physical level to a higher, more spiritual level, and we're going to go convert and help save souls. And then in the following couple of verses, he finds uh, James and John and, and brings them and, and they, they end up following him as well. So he's starting to gather here his disciples, his apostles, uh, to form the church and to preach uh, and, and restore the kingdom. So now we'll go to Luke 4 and let's start in verse 14. It says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So he's, he's preaching, and why is there such a fame? We, we learn that here. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. There's a short clip here I want to put in because I think the drama here is is very good and uh, it's very well done about Jesus, of course, quoting from Isaiah, the, the Messianic prophet. We find Isaiah sprinkled around everywhere where we see the Messiah. But let's just watch this short clip here. I love the English accent too. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind. to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Ye will surely say unto me, Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. 
But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Zarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel, and none of them were cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. <laughs> Okay, and then we're going to go back here to Luke 4. I want you to drop down to verse 32. It says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. So as he goes around Galilee preaching, starting off his ministry, they're astonished at what he's saying. Now, what would he be saying? It's interesting to think about what was known about Jesus. Because they say, Isn't this the son of Joseph? So it seems like there's at least a, a thought that they don't know who Jesus is. In other words, that he, that he is the Messiah. And yet, that's certainly what he is preaching. He's preaching that he is the Messiah. And he is giving doctrine in the synagogues there in Galilee that is astonishing to them. He is teaching something different. He is teaching uh, what we learn about him in the New Testament, which is not what has been taught. Remember that he is fulfilling the law of Moses. He's ending the law of Moses. And he's bringing in a new higher law with the Melchizedek priesthood and the restoration of the entire gospel. So what he is preaching here has to do with that new kingdom, has to do with a higher law, and it has to do with Gentiles, has to do with... Uh, King, uh, the kingdom and the Melchizedek priesthood, the spirit and new functions probably in the temple. Uh, so it's it's a whole new ball game with Jesus here teaching, and he's ruffling some feathers for sure. Okay, and then Jesus casts out devils. He uh, heals Simon Peter's mother, and then he the fame of him spreads throughout all of Galilee. And uh, this does not take very long, obviously. And so everybody brings their sick to him. And as long as they, are, they believe in him, they believe on his name, then he heals them through their faith. And it says that he casts out devils and even the devils recognize him as the Son of God. So this is an additional confirmation of who he is. Uh, the prophets, especially Isaiah previously, had prophesied about the Messiah that he would be a healer, that he would heal the blind, the deaf, the lame, and the sick. And, and so this is, uh, these are the authors, Matthew and Luke, that are writing here confirming that this is who he is and that he is fulfilling this prophecy. Remember that uh, he is... He is oftentimes referred to anciently as the healer. And he was given the, uh, the name of the healer. In fact, in Old English, in Anglo-Saxon English, he, in the first translations of the Bible out of Latin, he is not given the proper name of Jesus ever. He's given the name the healer. Uh, so that's who he is. And if you think about even the atonement, he is the healer. And so these examples of him healing everyone is just kind of a, a, a rise and a crescendo up to the atonement eventually, where he heals everyone, everyone's sickness, everyone's spiritual sickness. Uh, and so these are examples confirming who he is and what he's about to do. 